Okay, so we're going to have a little update on something we learned, okay? We learned that the genus Comocladia has urushiol in it, okay? Which is the same compound that's in uh, toxicodendron poison ivy. It's in a third of the members of the, of the family Anacardiaceae. Uh, now, I didn't know that until I read about it online. Anytime I touch a sumac, I'm a little, uh, it's in the back of my mind. This might, you know, even touching a roost, like roost, aromatica, roost, trilobata, you know, I'm like, ah, maybe there's, uh, this could have the, the oils in it, could have the oils, all right, but I've been lucky so far, not so the last couple days, you know, and I'm getting up, crunching the leaves up and shit, thought it was a xanthoxylum at first, okay, smelling it, <laughs> then when I seen the flowers, I was like, oh, that's a fucking anacard, oops, and then it was, it was still in the back of my mind, and then. I woke up and it was itching, and then now a day later, you know, I look like a boxer that got knocked out. <laughs> or like, if you see like a bad alcoholic, like we're talking 45, 50s, like street alcoholic, wino. Sometimes they get a little puffy face like that too, you know? I've been having a hard time. Been stung by the wasps, thank God, because if, if they hadn't stung me, I wouldn't have seen them. Turns out it's an endemic species of wasp. I've been poked by all the plants here, okay? Evidence of the extinct megafauna, because normally when plants get to islands, they speciate and evolve and become friendlier. Unless that island has a, you know, megaphone on it, which uh, the Antilles did, okay? Had the ground sloths here. They went extinct when the indigenous Americans arrived five or 6,000 years ago, you know, probably by the land bridge. And uh, maybe it wasn't a land bridge, but there, was, there wasn't there was as much ocean. Sea levels were obviously a lot lower. Uh, and, you know, so... Been learning, been having a great time. Been having a great time. Just comes with the territory. Gets a little rough sometimes, you know? Okay, now I gotta go get the uh, prednisona for uh, for my face. Also, I lost a tooth last night. Just flossing and it fucking fell out. It was a crown. Got knocked out 15 years ago, you know? What are you gonna do? That's just that, you know, you gotta crack a couple eggs, uh, as they say. Hey, greetings, you silly pricks. Welcome uh, to yet another episode of Crime Page by Bonnie Dozen. Today, I was coming to you from an ele elevation of about, I don't know, let's say 2,400 feet up uh, in a central Dominican Republic uh, in uh, the Cordillera Central. Okay, Cordillera Central. So uh, we're going to check out the cloud forest. It's very humid. Uh, there's, you can see it's very lush, very vegetated. We got a mix, you know, since we are somewhat close they're surrounded by human settlement. They don't look like it, but there's little stands and farms all over the mountainside. We get a mix of uh, native plants as well as uh, invasive and uh, naturalized non-native plants. But let's take a look at this uh, plant right there. I don't know if you can see it. Remember the Malvaceae, Ochroma pyramidale. Let's see if we can get up and get a nice some money shot of those flowers. Get a little closer. There you go. So you got five fused sepals, those brown sepals, and you got that uh, white corolla. And you got an androgynophore in there. You also got those palmate leaves. So, uh, you know, those are, those are dead giveaways that we got a malvaceous bastard on our hands there. Oh, yeah, we're very, very steep here. Very steep, as you can see. You got to be careful where you step because it looks, you know, it's so vegetated, so lush. Looks like you're about to step on some ground, but the plants are covering it and you're actually stepping into a void. So, uh, there you go. We'll get a little bit closer to those flowers right there. Very beautiful tree right there. And then when the flowers are done, they fall off and you get uh, this little rod-shaped ovary. As you could see, just behind that flower, you could see you got, the, you got a little ovary back there. Now, the rest of the island where I've been at has been mostly limestone, okay? You know, over by the Haitian border, down by Patern Alleys in the southwest. What we're on here now, we got, uh, you know, Cretaceous volcanics, metavolcanics, metamorphous volcanics. We got the siliceous racks. You know, uh, basically a whole bunch of igneous and metamorphic stuff, which we have not been on. Okay, and again, these peaks go up to 10,400 feet. That's the tallest peak in the Dominican Republic, tallest peak in the Caribbean. And uh, that's due to a subduction zone to the southwest. I mean, you got, it's really a, a clusterfuck of plate tectonics. So you got subduction zones to the east, to the west, to the southwest. Uh, you got a transform boundary, just a whole bunch of tectonics going on. You get tsunamis, you get earthquakes, of course. So uh, due to all the tectonic activity and the numerous plate boundaries nearby, look, you got a pollinator going up there. Uh, you're gonna have a lot of uplift. So, uh, you know, you get, you get quite a few mountain ranges in the Dominican Republic 
and they, they're all northwest to southeast trending. Because, uh, you know, you know, northeast to, or northwest to southeast trending, and uh, that subduction zone is to the southwest. So you got a subducting plate diving beneath the, the Caribbean plate, which is what we're on. Look at that Okroma. Beautiful tree. It's a beautiful tree. Beautiful bastard. Look at it. See that little rad behind that flower? That's the maturing fruit that'll elongate to about four times its size. Then you have a little seed capsule. Okay, now stepping behind me, we got just the whole wall of this fern, this member of uh, the Glycaniaceae. And once you see it, you'll know it. You know, once you see it, once you get used to it, you see it everywhere. And it does, it's, it's very common for it to form these wilds. Little wilds of green. Very uh, distinct branching structure too. I, I love it here. I love this country. People drive like fucking reckless maniacs, but I tend to as well sometimes. So, you know, I feel uh, somewhat at home. We got a, looks like a Bidens. Quite a few Bidens here. Oh, there's that rack. Look at that. It's not limestone. Looks like greenstone basalt. And may, no, maybe not. I don't know. The grain size is a little big. Hard to see beneath all the lichens and, uh, you know, biofilms on it. We got a melastome right there. Look at that. Now, interesting, too, is uh, we got a species of coyote bush in the genus Baccarus in the sunflower family right here. Okay, and you get this, uh, you know, you, you'll get it uh, where we are at a board about maybe 2,500 feet. I've seen it at up at, you know, 7,000 feet as well. Too bad we don't got no flowers on it. looks like they're developing. Backwards, of course, the dioecious plants here, the male or female. There's that uh, melastome. A lot of melastomataceae in this island. A lot of diversity, a lot of endemics in a family, melastomataceae. There's those, uh, that very notable venation, that subparallel venation. See, you got the one main vein and two side veins. Sometimes you got more than that. And here's the fruits. Little berries. Okay, another, another thing I forgot to mention about melastomes. You always got to flip those leaves over because, you know, oftentimes the abaxial surface is, uh, you know, a whole other thing going on. You know, the abaxial surface looks totally different than the top of the leaf. Those undersides can look amazing. Well, look at this. I know this guy. He's an endemic. I got stung by one of those. I didn't see him. They were they were uh, hanging off uh, some prickly pear, and they mobbed me. And I'm glad they did, because if uh, you know they're an endemic wasp, and if I hadn't uh, if I hadn't been stung by them, I wouldn't have noticed them. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the color, the patterns, and you know. Just from a from a purely objective perspective, they're quite beautiful, you know. And they let you get pretty close, okay? I don't know how many stung me, probably three or four. I imagine if you got stung by a bunch of them, you know, you'd uh, you'd, you'd not have a good time. But uh, you know, my pain went away in about 20 minutes, and I I never see a nest of them too big, you know. Looks like they got you know 20 little pods in there, 20 little kids. Okay, now, now look at this guy, Clusia rosia, rubbery-ass leaves, almost looks like uh, the texture of some kind of ficus, but he's in a Clusiaceae, okay? And these will actually send down aerial roots sometimes, too. I've seen them doing it. This was in another video over by the Serpentine spot. They get a big-ass a big -ass fruit on them with the sepals atop the fruit that almost make it look like a persimmon. But look at those opposite leaves. I mean, and the texture of that leaf all waxy like a little paddle. You slap your ass around. They, they could be a very large tree. And again, they send down aerial roots like a fig as well. Oh, uh, here's somebody honking down there. Sounds like one of the trucks is having trouble. I bet people go off the fucking road here all the time. I think the DR has one of the highest traffic fatality rates. But uh, I can't believe I didn't notice this before. Right here we got a, a pretty rare tree. A pretty rare juniper. Juniperus gracilior. There's about three different subspecies. I'm gonna have to uh, shimmy my ass up there and get a good look at it. This fern's pretty, uh, <laughs> it's pretty hard to climb through. You know, cause you can't see the ground. You're kind of just in an ocean of it. 
as you can see. But it does smell nice. It smells very good. It smells very earthy. Anyway, there's that uh, juniper. Extremely rare. Uh, it's an endemic. Nice Caribbean juniper. They're bird dispersed, of course. So uh, you get some interesting shit going on in the biogeography dungeon. Let's try and get a little closer, eh? Got some interesting lichen on it. Look at the color on it. Juniperus gracilia, everybody. Anyway, there's some more of those junipers. You see, they got this nice pendant habit. Nice drooping, uh, drooping habit right there. Wonder when they speciated on this island, you know, when they got here. It's like a little terrace. It's much easier to climb. Oh, yeah, there you go. Take a voucher for the herbarium. Not even that high above the road. Maybe 40 feet above the road. You just got to climb, th climb through the fern dungeon to get there. We'd sure love to uh, get some fruits. We got a pine up there too, but I can't tell if it's a uh, Pinus caribia. He uh, introduced one of its uh, Pinus occidentalis because they plant them. They plant the uh, Pinus caribia. Now here's an odd one. Kind of succulent stems. And uh, there's the fruit, little puffy fruit. Crack it open and you got, uh, you got those tiny seeds in there. You got the opposite leaves. Love to see what the flowers look like. Just coming up in the duff below this uh, stand of juniperus. Yeah, you know, I figured it was. I figured it was going to be like this. That uh, that orchid down there was just your uh, regular old spathoglottis, which is uh, somewhat uh, invasive in uh, tropical areas all over the world. Big hummingbird I just seen up there. My personal favorite again. There's that damn uh, Lobelia rotundiflora. Another uh, wonderful native Lobelia. Incredible. Look at that goddamn thing. Wish somebody was growing us back in the States. Just growing here in a warm, humid uh, cloud forest. You know, but I've seen it at a uh, little bit higher elevations too. Just an incredible companion with those little blue anther tubes. Doing a whole secondary pond presentation thing. God damn. I'm gonna, I'm gonna head back down that sketchy slope. Look at this massive bromelia though. Massive Guzmania. We got the member of the Apostanaceae right here. Got the opposite leaves. Got the bleeding latex. You want some avocado? Dogs like avocado. You know you do. Come here. Do you have a little bit, huh? Hey, 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 hey. Get out the trash. Get out the trash. There you go. Do you have some of this? Do you have some of that? Come on. I'll put it down there for you in case you, you know you freaked out by me. Oh, shit. Here, hey, come here. Old dogs love avocado, don't they, huh? huh? Oh, yeah, there we go. Neotropical blueberries. Ericaceae is the family here. Look at this guy. Look at that inflorescence. Little bell-shaped Corolla. Looks like, uh, it looks like he's getting knot on by someone. Got quite a few, uh, Stamens in there, and you got that central uh, pistil. Five petals fused together in a bell. Alternate foliage, maybe a three milliliter or three, three millimeter, excuse me, long petiole. Glabrous. Look at the venation on it. And he's got this kind of sparse growth, just poking up above uh, this abundant fern. Down here, look at the geology you got. I'm liking it. I'll cover it in, uh, I'll cover it in mosses and lichens. Got your uh, Melostomataceae right there. Got your Bacchus, Mersinites. The three lobes up top. You got your tree ferns, you got your pines. 
I think we're about uh, 3,000 feet. Oh, look, you got some lycophytes, too. Yeah, how about that? Oh, there we go. We got some uh, staminate flowers on that uh, baccarus. Because remember, baccarus are dioecious. Plants either produce male flowers or female flowers, never both. And here you got the male flowers. If these were the female flowers, you'd see the pappus sticking out. That little uh, that little fluff, the, the little bit of fluff that attaches to the akines for the wind dispersal and whatnot. And this guy, uh, you know, it's kind of got that musky scent to it. Uh, just like a lot of uh, white flowered members of the uh, Asteraceae sometimes have. So in other words, it's a, it's a sausage party. Those styles are there. They're poking up, but uh, their only purpose is to present pollen, which you could see in those little yellow globs on the end of, uh, on the end of them right there. Kind of pretty for a coyote bush. You know, sometimes you never know how, just how much fun you can have in a road cut. You got lycophytes dripping all over the place and shit. You know, look at it. Who doesn't like a lycophyte? Got all kinds of lichens. You probably got a hundred different species of organisms just uh, on this rock out crop alone. Well, I think it's safe to say this isn't limestone. You can see there's obviously a lot of iron present in this. And uh, this road cut, looking at this rock, you can see it just, it really easily fractures. It's like a very uh, mafic clay. Okay, probably of a igneous origin, maybe later metamorphosed, but either way, you got a lot of iron oxide in its soil. Kind of reminds me of New Caledonia, almost. Oh, well, this guy's interesting. Almost looks like a hypericum. Get your four petals, multiple stamens. The uh, ovary to fruit, which you could see in it, uh, it's that little uh, bowling pin shaped green thing in the center. You got one style. Got these little bracts, the little notorious bracts that uh, surround the flower at the base. You could see right there. These are just old ones, the brown ones. I mean, you, gotta, you probably got to have some uh, adaptation. To be able to grow on this uh, on this substrate, this iron-rich clay. Look at that! Look at that guy! Look at this guy! Oh, it's one of the stiff ferns. Holy shit! Look at that! Look at all the scales on there. It's a beaut, isn't it? Oh my god! Look at this goddamn lichen. Looks like frosted grass. Look at it. See those are those are producing the spores right there. You see it? Little black dots. That's something else. I never seen something like that. That's some weird shit going on up here, huh? Let's take the stabilization off so you can get a nice money shot of what's going on here. You know, one day I'm gonna take the dive and I get a little bit deeper into these guys. Because they're fucking bizarre. You know, old lineage too. You know, you get a fungus and an algae together in matrimony and it can do some wild stuff. Oh, look at this. It's a Camacrista. Cecil Pinioid. Member of the legume family. Did you get up close? Take a take a closer look at those uh, those flowers. Lanceolate uh, sepals. Of course, you got the pinnate foliage, and there's the fruit. Money shots. Just growing like a weed on the side of the road. Look at that. Looks ericaceous. You know, I, uh, oh, that's nice. What's that? A Cyperaceae or some kind? I parked down there by the uh, Alto de la Virgin. You know, they got an altar for the Virgin Mary. Kind of reminds me of, you know, back in Chicago, some old Polish lady saw uh, the Virgin Mary in the salt drip uh, during the winter 
uh, you know, under a viaduct on a Kennedy Expressway. Seems like a similar thing going on. Peace be with you and also with you. God, look at that rock. Oh my God, there's that, there's that one fern again we just seen down the road a little ways. Look at it. Oh! Now this guy's kind of odd. He's notable. Renayamia jamaicensis. What is Zing Gibber Alley's the order of ginger? There's the little uh, raceme right there. Juicy flowers. And when they mature, you could kind of see the ovaries develop in there. Those little pink balls. They'll swell up to a little bit bigger than a marble. And that's the fruit. Good looking monocotton. You got more orchids just dangling off the damn trees right there with the... Oh shit, you got some fungi up there too. With the tillandsias and all kinds of good stuff, good epiphytes. Hey, right here you got a little rubiaceous bastard. Look at how tiny those flowers are. Got your opposite leaves. Oh, leathery. Looks like uh, it looks like some sort of some sort of deranged the uh, Christmas bush. You know, for the holidays. This is nice. This is a real nice place. We got this uh, epiphytic orchid going off. Oh, look at that guy. Look at, look at that labellum. Look inside there. Just the dangling off this uh, tree. Everything is just soaking wet. But again, it's not too hot. It's like a temperature of San Francisco. Again, cloud forests are some of the most endangered kind of habitat around. Okay, thank God a lot of this stuff is, uh, at least depending where you are, is in uh, preserves already. You know, probably my favorite kind of habitat after the desert. High elevation, neotropical cloud forest. You got some, uh, I mean, you got you got cloud forest then a, you know, you got paleotropical cloud forest too, over in the quote old world, but... uh. I tend to like the neotropics the most because they got the hummingbirds. You don't get hummingbirds uh, east of the Atlantic, not native. And why do I mention hummingbirds? Because uh, they direct the evolution of uh, the evolution and the morphology of uh, the flowers of many of the plants here because they're such effective pollinators. You know, so you got it. That's a uh, that's a strong selector for who's going to get pollinated and who's not. You got a red tubular flower or an orange tubular flower. Look at that guy. Oh no, this, this uh, branch the bromeliad was on just fell off. He's, he looks, it looks like a little torch. Just to do, just, uh, to just wedge him right there. Hope he stays up. You'll be okay there, guy. Why don't you just stay right there? Look at this. Everything is soaking in the ground. It's just squishy as hell. It does. It reminds me of like uh, going on a hike in, in like Mendocino after a rain. After a good rain. Look at it. Everything's just dripping. Got all kinds of damn orchids, all kinds of shit. You know, just dangling, dangling down, sopping wet. Smells incredible. I wish I could give you the smell. You know, it'd be like uh, one of those uh, soothing, soothing bombs, soothing uh, scents. You know the shit that the, uh, you know the Etsy witches sell. There's that Ericaceous guy again. See that? All kinds of ferns. Okay, so to get to our target plant, I actually had to get, you know, it's too shady down below, so I had to climb up in this tree. All right, it's it's shifty as hell. It's covered in mass. It's it's super wet. You can see you got a nice palm over there. Got Tillandsias uh, every which way, okay? Nine ways till Sunday. But to get to our target plant, this is what I had to do because it's too shady down below. And our target plant is a real odd one. It's a carnivorous plant. And there it is right there. Pinguicula casabitoana. Oh, look, the branch is falling off. Let's put that back. There you go. See all those trichomes on his leaf blades? And then uh, when it flowers, it just sends up a little white, uh, a little stack, about four inches, three inches with a little white flower in it. And I guess these are getting poached hard too. 
But uh, they're a little higher up in the canopy. As you can see, I'm about, I don't know, 12 feet above the ground right now. Endemic to Hispaniola. What a beaut that is. You know, I think it's probably endemic to the uh, Dominican Republic, too. Probably endemic to the DR. Because you go west, things start drying out. That those These northwest to southeast trended mountain ranges, and you got like six or seven of them, they're, they... Uh, Create an effective rain shadow to the southwest, and that's where you get all the big cacti with the shit. Okay, not to be confused with these uh, with that little tillandsia that's germinating there. Okay, that's a different plant. This is a uh, this guy's an epiphyte too. Family's Lentibulariaceae. In order, Lamiales. I like being up in a tree. It's nice up here. It's a little bit brighter. Got some, it's like a dappled canopy. Look at that. There's that uh, Iroquois again. I just uh, hope I don't break my ass. Oh, look, look, you got a, you got a pinguicula next to a tillandsia. See, the ping's got the trichomes, the tillands doesn't. It, it's so slippery and wet. I fall and break my ass. Wouldn't be the first time. You know, why not? I mean, I got I got the wasps things. I got the glockids in the mouth. I got the urushiol ass rash. It's actually on my face. Uh, what else? There's a few more ways I could eat shit here. I just got to figure them out. Give me some time. I'll do it. God, I love this plant. You know, that might be a guzmania. Maybe not a tillance. Another ping. So pings always like shade. You know, unlike uh, most carnivorous plants, which seem to like full sun. Pings always like shade. Pinguicula. You know, there's a, a few that are, you know, commonly sold. Commonly sold in stores. You know, you could really easy house plants. The more common species, of course. You know, don't go poaching these. Who the fuck would do that? Luckily, I think, you know, like I said, they're mostly, they, they tend to like it higher up. It's too shady for them down below, so. Very, uh, very distinct form to them. Look how narrow those leaf blades are a lot of other pings just form a nice rosette you know much wider leaf blades so this is uh morphologically pretty uh pretty spectacular too pretty rare how you doing it how's the how's that little weevil doing it maybe the ping just mostly catches flies little flies and gnats and, and shit i know the one in my kitchen does you know i was trying to do him a favor, help him out. That weevil was crawling on a branch. I threw him right in there. You know, Lentibulariaceae is a cool family. Uh, Utricularia is in that family, too. Another, another carnivore. Well, there you go. Uh, Pinguicula casabitoana, everybody. Just dangling. Just dangling. He's a dangler. Now, how am I going to get down? It's kind of slippery. I'm going to have to go down slow. But that's how I seen them. I was looking down there, and I didn't see nothing. And I knew they were here, because it's shady. It's a wet cloud forest. You know, they're endemic to the area. And I, But I was like, well, maybe it's too shady here. So then I look up, and I see this guy right there. That's how I did it. Okay? Say goodbye to him. Beautiful endemic. Let's hope he's around another 50 years. We'll see, huh? Oh, the climate's perfect. Perfect. There you go. You see him? See, there's one of them. Ah! Oh, oh, I love you! You fuck. You beautiful fuck. God damn it. You know, how does a pinguicula speciate? How'd it get here? You know, it really was. The West Indies, it was kind of a... I don't know if it was necessarily a land bridge, but you could go island hopping back at times of lower sea level. You know, from the tip of Florida through Cuba... Down into the, uh, down on a Hispaniola where I am now. Then east to Puerto Rico. Then down through the Virgin Islands. Okay, because it was an island arc. All that tectonic activity. You go straight to Venezuela. Just skipping stones through the, uh, listen to that muck. Just skipping stones, you know, like that. From Florida to Venezuela. Very important in the biogeography dungeon of uh, the Neotropics. Look at this. This is kind of odd. Just a single flower coming out of this branch. No leaves, nothing. 
Gano Calyx Tetraptorus. Pretty good. Pretty weird member of the Ericaceae right here. Got four petals, eight stamens. Look at those anthers inside there too. But notice that the flowers are in multiples of four. Pretty odd for the Ericaceae. Those are some weird anthers, huh? Never know what you're going to find in a cloud forest. You know, maybe it's part of this tree, but it's, you know, I can't tell what the shit that is. There you go, there's that uh, endemic magnolia, magnolia pelescence. Alternate leaves, kind of rubbery, kind of glabrous. Ovate. See, there's more. And there's a large tree. Oh, what a banger this is when it blooms, huh? Magnolias, of course, being a very odd uh, form of flower, you know? Somewhat, uh, you could call a basal angiosperm lineage, okay? You could also say a uh, living dinosaur, but, you know, they don't like it when you say that too much. Not the magnolias, but the taxonomists, and I understand why. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, if you're just getting into this stuff, you could call them a living, uh, a living dinosaur, a living fossil, whatever the shit, it don't matter. Oh, there's that sun. Every once in a while, a cloud goes, you know, every other now and then, a cloud goes in front, blocks the sun out, gets cooled, and the sun comes back out. But everything is just impossibly humid and moist. Oh, yeah, there's this guy again. There's our old friend, the uh, orchid. That orchid we just seen about, I don't know, five, ten minutes back. Look, he's got a little, that labellum bends down. He's got a little mouth. The pollinia, of course, is up under that, uh, that little red cap. The pollinia, plural, pollinium, singular, excuse me. Got some cali in there, some little studs. No smell, though. So, uh, at least not that I could smell. So, I don't know how he's getting pollinated. Maybe some kind of deception. Maybe he's releasing some sort of pheromones. Who knows? Uh, whose aerial roots are these? Those will, of course, root into the ground and form a new branch. Looks like they're, uh, oh, it looks like it's that Clusia. They belong to that Clusia. Yeah, I've seen them doing that. I've seen them doing that uh, over by the uh, serpentine spot a little bit lower down. Oh, shit. We got a species of Decaea. One of my favorite uh, orchid genera. Could be Decaea glauca. They get that here. There's only nine other species uh, that, grow, <laughs> that grow on the island of Hispaniola. So, see, there's the seed capsules. Didn't catch them in fruit. But you should look this one up when you're done watching this raggedy ass video, because uh, you know the flowers are pretty, uh, pretty spectacular. He's just growing an epiphyte, you know, growing as an epiphyte with all the mossy moss. Got a little spider on him right there. You know, with that, uh, with those leaves like that, almost imbricate, almost uh, like little scales. How could you not love him? That's a banger right there. Look, he's got goddamn moss growing on the leaves. Cloud forests just blow my mind. Just continually blow my goddamn mind. Okay? Oh, it's like going in, it's like going into Jewel Osco and you see Dennis Farina in there. Okay? You know, I, I shit you not, but I was in an elevator once with Dennis Farina when I lived in New York. Look at that goddamn like Oh! There's just so much diversity compacted, so much biological richness compacted into such a small area. God damn! Okay, uh, so I have not seen any more of that pinguicula. Uh, and the word is that it's becoming increasingly rare, uh, of course, due to poaching. You know, you get a collector. There's a big market for carnivorous plants. So, being that a lot of people desire them, you get people that are going to go poach them hard. And I don't know if there's any... There's that decay again. I don't know if there's any plan in place to really protect them. But, uh, this is a spot where they were supposed to be. And a guy I talked to, a friend of mine, said they've been getting plucked off. And uh, sure enough, I have not seen any. There's none. So, uh, you know, I want to see my carnivorous plant collection. It's really cool. Gotta have it.
got to have it. I'll pay $60 for that plant. I don't care. I'll pay $140 for that plant. I don't care. I, I need to have it. Ah, oh, fucking A. You know, you see the same story so many things. <laughs> Here we go again. I'm bumming you guys out. You'll be fine. Find a way to philosophically deal with it and shut up. Quit being a fucking weenie. You know what? People got to deal with hard shit sometimes. You got to accept that harsh reality. Fucking sweep it under the rug. And be positive. I am positive. I'm ha I'm ecstatic. I'm stoked to be here. I just, you know, I'm going to call it like I see it. And it's pretty fucked. Because that's what we do. That's uh, that's what our society is like. It doesn't have to be, but that's the way it is. Look at this. More evidence that the coevolution with the herbivory. Look at the spines and prickles. The prickles on his tree fern. Nice sciatia. How's that? That's for your evidence of uh, extinct uh, megafauna. Can you imagine a ground sloth trying to gnaw on this? How would they do that? Well, you think they were cute? I bet they were cute. They could probably trample you to death. You know, they must have weighed half a ton, but they were cute. You like the muscos? Okay, so so here's what we're going to do, because you bore with me through all this, okay? Uh, I'm, we're going to go back to Casa Beto, and then I'm going to take you out. I'm going to take you out to the Red Lobster. No, no, no. I'm going to take you out to, uh, I'll take you out to Bennekins. No, no, no. I'll take you out to uh, TGI Fridays, okay? And we'll we'll both just hang out there eating steak fries and chicken wings till we feel like we want to die. And then, uh, and then after that, I'll take you to go see the new Tom Cruise movie he's got coming out, okay? Which will also uh, presumably make us want to die. And then we'll just go hold hands and soak together, okay? Just you and me, okay? Because really, you know, what's going on in the world today is not too nice. But we, found way we find ways to cope, okay? We find ways to cry together and deal with the pain. So many goddamn lovely orchids everywhere. You could just see them. All right. Okay. We can stress eat. Okay. We could stress eat. We can cry. We can even shit our pants. Okay. Rolled up in a fetal position. Crying on the floor behind a couch. Whatever you want to do. You know why I do it? I do it because I need to flush out the prudes. Okay. All right, some people are trying to get more followers. I'm trying to turn them away. I'm the exact opposite, okay? I want my fan base to be a very specific demographic of person who can tolerate shit like this. The poison oak on my legs is really starting to burn, guys. It's really, it's not poison oak. Technically, it's comocladia, but it's the same chemical compound. Maybe it differs by a molecule or two. What do you think about that? What do you, isn't that, that's, shit's crazy, right? See, now, now stepping into this, you know, it looks like uh, you got a solid embankment there, but I guarantee you it drops off right about there, and it's about an eight-foot drop because I've done it already. It's a really sketchy fucking terrain, and these uh, ferns don't make it any easier. Anyway, here's a, here's an odd one. Here's a, this is a Margravia. Margravia ruber. You know what? The fucking camera's not going to focus, so I'm just going to break a branch off. Margravia rubra, okay? And he's in his own family, Margraviaceae. But he's in the order Ericales, so he's somewhat uh, more closely related to blueberries than he is to anything else here. And he's got this kind of scandent vine. You could see he's going up, or is that him? I think that's him. I think this is him, this whole tree right here. I gotta look. Look, see, he wants to follow me, because, uh, I mean, I think he knows I'm not going to give him no more food, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, maybe he just wants company. It's in their DNA. Uh, anyway, so there you go, Mark Gravia Rubra. Yeah, that's... I thought it was a vine, but it's actually, oh no, it, it is a vine. See, this is another tree. It's so hard to tell what's what. It's so goddamn lush. It's so wet. But there you go, Mark Gravia Rubra. Okay, fancy bastard, Eric Callies in his own goddamn family, Mark Graviaceae. God damn, look at the sheen on that magnolia. It's like it's like smooth velvet. There's uh, those new leaves in bud. Glabrous up top, smooth, a little bit uh, shiny. And then you got just the, the most pleasant texture to those uh, 
leaf on her sights. Okay, here's a pretty common tree uh, seen throughout the area. You can hear the leaves flapping in the wind. Leaves almost look like it'd be a poplar or something. Or perhaps a ficus due to how uh, glabrous they are. But uh, look at those flowers in there. Those are, those are actually the fruits. The flowers are right here. It's the member of the Aurelia. You see those two little, the little Y poking out of there? See the two styles? And again, quite common. If I can get this goddamn camera to focus, there you go. See there's those flowers, see those white anthers, white filaments. But again, the leaves almost look like they'd be like a like a waxy poplar. Okay, you, see, you know, you hear the you hear the leaves blowing in the wind. It's about a 30, uh, 40 foot tall tree. It's an endemic. Oh, look at this guy just coming up on the side of the road. Terrestrial orchid. Oh, that's nice. Oh yeah, who's going up under the pond like that? Who's doing it? Who did you see that guy? You see him there? Oh look, he's got a spur. He's got a nectar spur too. <laughs> There's another one over there. Just uh, coming up with the Melastoma tacea over there with the little the berries. Ooh, berries. You like berries, huh? You silly prick. He's got look, he's got quite a complicated uh, labellum. And he's got the nectar spur. There's got to be some intense mycorrhizal activity going on in a glomeromycota in this soil. Okay? Especially where you had that gonocalyx. Because the ericaceae, the blueberry family, they love the arbuscular mycorrhizal uh, symbiosis. Okay? They're so hot for it. A melastone. <laughs> Look at this. Look at uh, Vaccinium racemosum. Neotropical blueberries. Look at this guy. Beautiful ericoid bastard. God damn. Got that glycinoid fern. Got the lycophytes. Okay, so I dissected one of those flowers and I pulled an individual uh, stamen out. You can see that inverted anther. Synapomorphy of uh, much of the ericaceae. You can see how it's like uh, bent back like a paper clip kind of. can't tell if it's porocytal or not. I need to get the hand lens for that, but uh, gotta do that though. Gotta get, you know, gotta get good money shots for reference later on. There you go, neotropical uh, blueberries. Oh yeah, look at this. We got a member of the Orobankaceae. We got a species of Agalinus. They all kind of look the same though, so <laughs> so good luck figuring out which one this is. I'll get my guys on it. So, you know, he's a, he's a parasite. He's a partial parasite. See, he's got some green in him. He's doing some of his own work, but he's stealing from, uh, he's stealing from his uh, peers a little bit as well. Probably from the species of grass, which maybe is a native, so who gives a shit? All of Orobankaceae, save for, I think, two genera, two of the basal genera in the family, are uh, parasites. Hollow parasites, which means they produce no chlorophyll, or they're hemiparasites, which means they produce some of their own chlorophyll, but they're going to steal a little bit. So paintbrush family here. Only one I've seen so far. And of course, they got that beautiful zygomorphic corolla. Bilaterally symmetrical. Cut it like a heart, but not like a pizza. Agalinus, everybody! Well, it looks like that's all I got for you tonight. Hopefully, did you get something out of that? Did you have a nice time? Are you having a nice time now? Look at that goddamn magnolia. Oh. Let's see. He's got some, uh, got some fruits on him. Little red knob. It's like, uh, see this? Like right there. Oh. You gotta go find a cloud forest. Okay, just go read up on them at least.
Well, that's all I got for you tonight. Have a good, uh, have a good rest of your evening and whatnot. Hopefully it doesn't piss on me too bad. It's intermittent, the rain. All right, take it easy. Wash your ass. Don't be a prick. Go fuck yourself. Bye. You know, Diego, really? Did you have to do that, Diego? Huh? You asshole. You guys guarding the church? I'll give you more avocado. Oh, you're such a good dag. Oh, you're so sweet. How'd you get so sweet? Oh, look at you. You guarding the Blessed Virgin, huh? Were you here when Diego came in here and wrote his name in the ash on a wall? What's your problem? Don't give me that attitude, man. I gave you sardines, all right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you... Oh, oh I know what that is. No! <coughs> What's his problem? What's your attitude? You got attitude. That's right. Well, take care of him for me. Listen to me. You want... Hey, you want to sneak back on a plane with me? I'll wear it. Hey, I'll wear a big puffy coat. I could fit you under there. I'm going to your... I'm going to the United States. We got so many fat asses. They'll just think I'm a plus size passenger. I'll stuff you, stush you under there. They won't even know. I am gonna have to disinfect my, my hand though. So I don't get the hand. Cool it! Cool with the fucking toad! You know, I, I don't know how anything grows. You know, it's just such stiff competition. You know, with no fire. Here's that magnolia again, magnolia palescence. Got a fruit up there. just such stiff competition i don't know you know and again you step off right there and you'll drop probably 15 feet as you could tell already happened to me <laughs> let's fucking go come on let's go let's go